You are listening to episode 184 of the Confident Coaches Podcast, the one where you make a yes plan. Let's go. Welcome to the Confident Coaches Podcast, a place for creating the self-confidence you need to do your best work as a life coach. If you want to bring more boldness, more resilience, and more joy to your work, this is the place for you. I'm your host, Amy Latta. Let's dive in. Well, hello there, coach. I'm really excited to share what I'm going to share with you today because I think I think it's going to flip a switch and a lot of minds out there that are listening right now. This episode is especially for people who like literally cringe if you run whenever you hear the words, failure is required to succeed. You can't succeed unless you fail. We're going to fail our way to success. If every time you hear that, you kind of shrivel up and die just a little bit inside, this episode is for (laughs) you. Because I know this is true. I know we can coach you every which way till Sunday. I know that we can point out that. I know you can logically see that failure is a step there and I can pull out all the examples of every successful person who's ever existed and the failures that we don't either know about or focus on once they become successful. I know that we can do this, but something like literally just like locks up in our minds and we become unable to move forward or do the things that we really need to do. It's like you will dance around being successful rather than just dive right into the failure, even though we know that's the path. So we're going to talk about failing your way to success through a completely new lens. Okay. So this is definitely a grab some pen and paper. There's some notes to take here. I'm very excited about sharing this. And and a lot of it comes from like, y'all know I love a good fail challenge. I've talked about it multiple times on the podcast. It's literally written into the Path to 100K Mastermind program. After you answer what's working for you and what you really love, and then we identify what's not working for you and what you don't love. And then step three of the Path to 100K Processes. We start taking epic action. An epic action is action that is driven to fail. Like we are purposely taking failing action. It's action that we know is probably not going to work, but we're going to try it. We're going to see, you know, what's working, what's not working. And now let's try like a hundred more things so that we can keep adding to those lists. Like the purpose is to fail. The purpose is to experience rejection to build our confidence, to try things that we wouldn't normally try, to see if we can figure out the thing that's going to work that we haven't been able to land on, to try things that you might be brilliant at, you've just never done them before. Um, We've done multiple podcasts on this, as I've already said. We did a whole podcast with Krista St. Germain last year on here. It was This one I know for sure, episode 161, How to Fail and Feel the Deep Feels. And she talks specifically about her experiment to fail for 90 days straight, right? That this was her master coach training project where it was like purposely failing every day for 90 days. I've talked about fail plans, taking epic action, multiple episodes. I have talked to this with my close friends list on Instagram. So if you are not a close friend on Instagram, I'll I'll share with you later how to become one. But if you've ever seen stories from me that have a green circle instead of a hot pink circle, that's going only to my close friends. And uh, I think it was December or towards the end of last year, I was sharing like failing my way to, and I shared a bunch of my fails with my close friends. So we're going to update this conversation. We're going to talk about it through a new lens. And this is where Shonda Rhimes enters the conversation. (laughs) You're all like, wait, what? 
why is Shonda coming in? So if you don't know, if you don't know, Shonda is a super famous television showrunner and writer. Even if you don't know her name, you have for sure heard of some of her work. She created Grey's Anatomy, which was started in 2005, and I'm recording this in 2023. So a show that's still on the air 18 years later. She's the creator and main writer for Grey's, Grey's Anatomy. She did Scandal, How to Get Away with Murder, um, Bridgerton, and the latest and greatest Queen Charlotte of Bridgerton stories on Netflix. Like this is literally a third of everything that she's created in the world. Just a few of the massively successful shows this woman has created. And she's really, really good at it. Like, this is her genius. And she has this phrase, uh, I'm getting ready to talk about her book and what was part of the inspiration for this episode of, uh, you know, first only different. That she is a, a black woman who has created some of the most successful shows in television history, that the rarity of that, the, you know, she's so good at this, and yet she's literally blazed pathways that were not previously open. Just ast like astounding her level of success. She's really good at what she does. And... She uses what she's good at to actually protect herself from rejection and failure. I thought this was really, really fascinating. We're going to get into, so we're going to get into a little bit more about how I know this, but I just found this super fascinating. You know, you would think somebody who's achieved this level of success in an industry where there are way more players than success stories, right? You would assume that these people would be brazenly confident, right? But we've been down this road before, coaches. We've had this conversation multiple times. I feel like you never, ever, ever believe me when I, but I promise you success does not create confidence. Success will not make you confident. You can have a ton of success and still feel like it's all going to go away. That you aren't worthy of it, that someone is going to come take it from you, that it was all a fluke, that you can't possibly keep recreating it. Confidence and success do not go hand in hand. They Confidence is something you have to build separately outside of any success that you create. Now, frequently, becoming extraordinarily confident will lead to the success. The confidence comes first, Okay. So all of this conversation and the whole point of this podcast came from the fact that Shonda wrote a book. So she's known for her television series. She's written a couple of movies, but she also wrote a book called The Year of Yes. Now, some of you might have heard of this because it ain't new. It came out in 2016. We're, we're talking, it's 2023 now. It's seven years old. I just listened to it this past weekend. After falling in love with what she created in Queen Charlotte, which may I say, I do believe Queen Charlotte was significantly better than either two Bridgerton series. So if you never saw Bridgerton, don't worry about it. Go watch Queen Charlotte. It's a really exceptionally well-written and well-acted period piece. And I watched it this past weekend. I've been meaning to listen to her book. And... I was so like reading articles or something led me to like, this woman's really fascinating to me. And I've been meaning to read that book. So let me, let me go do that. So I listened to, so to be very clear, I didn't read the book. I actually listened to her, the audiobook, which she does read. It is, it's, it's a perfectly fine book. Um, it's not the best thing I've ever read. Um, I think this, this is one of those books where if you're not familiar with coaching at all, it will blow your mind. But since I've been a coach for over 10 years now, and there was a lot of stuff in there that was like, yeah, this, this tracks, right? Um, but there were still some really good nuggets. Um, you know, it's, it's a pretty easy read with some solid nuggets of inspiration. Um, it's certainly not a waste of your time by any means. 
And the whole point of the book starts with a story that she talks about Thanksgiving back, I think, 10 years ago. I think it's 2013. I could be wrong on that. But Thanksgiving 2013 and her eldest sister just kind of off the cuff says, you just, you always say no or you never say yes. I can't, I can't, I'm already messing it up. I already, I'm already doing a terrible job of recounting. I think it was you never say yes. And this is just, it landed on her for one of the first times of really understanding. So by 2013, she's already, she's already created half of the shows I mentioned, right? She's already massively successful. She's already winning awards and being invited to places. And she always said no. She always said no. She was an introvert. She had a lot of social anxiety. She was very self-conscious and had a lot of worries about her weight. So this massively successful showrunner in Hollywood who blazed trails was completely happy to say no to all of these invitations and just stay home. Now, listen, I can relate to a lot of this. Um, You know, I've mentioned recently about my recent diagnosis with ADHD. um, And I'm now... Uh, I'm now taking medication for that and my anxiety levels have gone way down. I've experienced a lot of social anxiety myself. Um, Not that I have anxiety, but it was a side effect of having unmedicated, untreated ADHD for me. And I would much rather just not to. (laughs) It's so much easier not to do things. It's so much easier to ignore the invite or to say, oh, I got something else going on. Like I'm related to her right out of the gate. So after being called out by one of her older sisters, she decided to embark on, drum roll please, the year of yes. Obviously the whole point of the book. Which listening to her year of yes, this was just another way of approaching a fail plan, an epic action plan. What if you created a yes plan? plan. So she had some key points and we're going to go through them one by one. So definitely make sure you have your pens and papers out or just listen first and then come back and and re-listen to actually get some of the some of the coaching questions I'm going to throw out you. But just really kind of like listen right now. What would a yes plan look like? What if we approached this through the different doorway? And it's one of the reasons why I created this podcast episode because the book in and of itself is not a book on how, it's not a how-to on saying yes. It's not a primer on creating like the things you are going to say yes to. It's her story of saying yes over the course of a year, how she came out on the other side in an entirely different place, a more confident person. There are some key takeaways Um that she gave that I'm borrowing to expand on from more of like a coaching session. So you're not going to get that from the book, but the book is definitely inspiring this podcast episode of like, okay, what if we take the key, the key takeaways that she had and turn that into, how can we use those takeaways to create a yes plan for every single one of you that's listening right now? And I really want to reiterate Your yes plan is the same exact thing as a fail plan, the same exact thing as an epic action plan. We can use all of these phrases interchangeably and they all mean the same thing. I'm not talking about three different things. I don't care what you call yours, but if yes plan gets you out of your, but I don't want to fail mentality, then run with that. I always like to meet people where they are. Of course, I'm going to meet you with maybe like a little boot ready to kick a little, kick you in the ass a little bit if I need to. But if yes plan works for you as opposed to a fail plan or an epic action plan, then let's create your yes plan. And But also the yes plan idea gave me some better questions to ask you to help you create it no matter what you call it. Okay. All right. So here's how we're going to do this. First of all, let's start with the obvious place. The obvious starting point is, so number one, what things she normally said no thank you to that she would now say yes to? 
These are opportunities in front of you right now. Things you are already saying no to out of a lack of comfort, out of shyness, out of any number of reasons that you can start saying yes to. Yes to invitations to speak. Yes to in-person networking or online networking. Yes to posting the 30-day offer challenge that I have in Free to Paid Coach. Yes to raising your hand to coaching in Free to Paid Coach. Or yes to saying yes to that coach, like me, hello, that you just feel and are vibing with. Something that you've been saying no to for a long time that you can start saying yes to. Uh, It could be yes to engaging when people comment or like your posts or asking questions or follow-up questions. Like opportunities that are literally right in front of you right now that you see all of the time that you are routinely saying no to. What are some other super easy right in front of you ways to say yes? This is the simplest place to start when you're creating a yes plan is what are you currently saying no to that you like you are very aware I'm saying no to these things and the next time they come around I'm going to say yes. So what's that list? Okay so the next thing number two and to me this is a next level of saying what to say yes to. What do you think about? What have you gotten an idea about? What things have flittered across your mind at times and your instinct is, oh, I can't do that. So these ones may not be quite so obvious and I'm going to really ask you to be on to yourself here and really pay attention to when you find yourself saying things, oh, I'm just not good enough. I'm not smart enough for that. I'm not pretty enough for that. Oh, I could never be good at that. So see how this is a little bit different than just like, what are you currently saying no to? Like these are things that flitter across. These may not be things that are top of mind. These are things I want you to be on the lookout for. So Let's, let's give it an example. Maybe you've had the idea of just offering like one off or one month coaching because you've been, what you've been offering isn't working and it's not generally what I would coach you to do, but you just kind of have this idea of like, maybe I should just go sell some one off sessions, but your instinct goes, oh, I can't do that because that's not what they say. I might, I might do that wrong. All the experts say to do this instead. What if you said yes to those things? Even if it may not be what the expert says. Even if you may not be very good at it. Even if your instinct is, oh, I can't do that. What if you can do that? What if you said yes to those things? We had a really great conversation in Path to 100K just today on this very thing of What things are you saying, oh, I can't do that for any number of reasons, right? I'm not talented enough. One of the biggest reasons we'll go, oh, I can't do that is because, oh, that's not what the biggest guru that I've been paying attention to has said. Like how many things are you not doing right now? How many things have you been saying no to? Because, well, Amy said this. Why don't you start saying yes to those things? Why not? I just suddenly had this like, like, fuck it. Why not? Give it a try. Worst thing that's going to happen is it's not going to work. Worst thing that's going to happen, you're going to find out, no, that isn't really what I do. One of the best things that could happen is you could have a hell of a lot of fun doing it and you might figure out a way to make it work. And it could go completely against any coaching that I've ever given. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. This to me is probably one of my Like it's probably the least comfortable for us as humans, but it's probably my favorite because this is where you're going to get like some serious growth where you're consciously going against a belief about yourself, which is very different than the first category, which is like, I don't want to do that. (laughs) Like the first category, number one is more like, I want to do that. This one is more like, I don't think I can do that. All right. So number three, now we're going to flip the table upside down. What do you not like in your life that you are currently saying yes to right now? So this is a little little twist. What are you saying yes to that you don't actually want to be saying yes to? 
So in the book, Shonda used an example of she didn't like that she was over 100 pounds overweight. But when she talked to friends about weight loss, she like she specifically talks about she didn't want to learn to like eating salads because she likes barbecue ribs. She didn't want to learn to love exercising versus not exercising. She didn't really want to learn not to turn to food when she was feeling a lot of emotions, which she it said, talks about in the book about being, um, I don't know that she uses the phrase emotional overeater, but she talks quite a bit about using food when she was feeling so terrible. And she was saying yes to that. Her conclusion was she was saying yes to being fat by saying yet by by saying yes to barbecue ribs and eating food in order to help with her emotions. Now, I want to be really clear that we could have an entire conversation about fatness and weight loss and I don't like I don't really love the, the some of that conversation, but that's not really what this talk is about right here. It really is more about what are you currently saying yes to? that you don't want to? Are you saying yes to being unbooked? Are you saying yes to being unpaid, unprofitable, unprosperous? And how is that showing up? What things do you see yourself doing or not doing that are your way of saying yes to what you don't want? So this could be as simple as you're not making offers. You know, you're saying yes to being unpaid because you're not making offers. You're saying yes to being unprofitable and unpaid because you're not asking current clients for referrals. You're not asking them to renew. You're not getting out there and meeting new people and nurturing relationships. Like you're you're saying yes to being unbooked because you are unwilling to meet new people. Or up until now, you've been unwilling to meet new people. This here's one that popped up for me when I was thinking about this myself. This is kind of part of like unprosperous. How I've been saying yes. So we're gonna get a like tree of trust here. Everybody lean in. We're in the tree of trust. How I've been saying yes to being unprosperous because I haven't been going to bed when I say I'm gonna be going to bed. Now, this could be an entirely different conversation if you've heard of the term revenge procrastination. I've never shared this before, but something since my ADHD diagnosis has come up that I realized that I was doing. Revenge procrastination is when people stay up late to enjoy leisure activities, even though they know they need to sleep. Oh, hello, Amy. Have you met yourself? (laughs) It's a thing. You can look it up. We could probably do a podcast episode on it. But it's this whole idea of like, you're, you are not listening to yourself because it's the only free time. It's the only brain. For me, it was the only brain space I could get. It was at the end of the day. Everybody else was in bed. I know I need to go to bed. But I'm, gonna, I'm choosing. I'm saying yes to less sleep. Which means I'm saying yes to being unprosperous. If I want to be more prosperous in my business, I need to start saying yes to sleep. I need to go to bed and keep those leisure activities outside of bedtime. So I know it's a little bit upside down, but what are those things right now for you? What are you currently saying yes to that you don't want to be? And what's the opposite of that? That's what you want to put on your yes plan. Okay, so the next area a word to say yes in your yes plan is saying yes to no. I know, it's so fun, right? Like you're like, Amy, I, I need like a decoder ring to understand some of these concepts, some of these sentences coming out of your mouth. <laughs> saying yes to no, which is basically where are you saying yes right now because you're avoiding a difficult conversation, right? Where should you be saying no? So this is a little bit different than the... Then, then number three. Number four is more along, it's more external. This is where you're probably people pleasing. You don't want to upset someone. You know, what if you said yes to having the difficult conversation? 
What if you said yes to telling people, no, I'm not going to do that. So number three is more about like what you are doing to yourself. And it's more of an internal conversation. This is more of an external conversation. You're currently saying yes to people. You're currently putting other people's needs ahead of yours. So you need to start saying yes to telling them no. You you picking up what I'm throwing down here? I know you are. I know you are. I know. Hello, people pleasers of America. (laughs) Like what boundaries do you need to set with other people? Do you need to tell your family that these are my work hours? Do not disturb me. Unless there is like blood shooting out of your head, do not knock on that door. I really wish I could set a boundary with Lou. I can't even tell you how many times he's come in and out of this, (laughs) of my office since I hit record. And I've even had to be like, Lou, go lay down while I've been talking to you. Like what's currently sucking out all of your energy and it's not even for you? Can you say no? to chairing that fundraiser when everybody expects you to run it? Can you say no to attending every single event associated with that organization? Can you step back in a couple places? Where can you say yes to no in your life right now? This right here, it's so interesting when I think about number three and number four, because one is an internal conversation and you have to be really like, willing to love yourself. And we're going to get to that in just a moment. The other one requires you to be okay that other people will be upset with you. Like one is like you're kind of like you're punishing yourself in both instances, but one is like this internal punishment where you are allowing yourself to kind of ramrod over you. And the other one is where you're allowing other people to do that to you. Okay. I know. I know. I know. How's your list looking? Is it getting long? (laughs) At this point, I was like, oh, so before I get to the last two, there's only two more. I want to interject real quick that this was really helpful for me to come up with ideas like the fail plan. I've approached this very differently in the past in terms of like, okay, what can I ask for that people will probably say no to? And I just feel like this is this, this This allowed my brain to come up with more areas of what I've been avoiding that will require me to fail most likely because I may not be that great at having difficult conversations. I may not be that great at sticking to going to bed by X time and not staying up later than I want to. I might fail at that. But I never thought of these ideas in my fail plan before. I never thought of them before. So I really hope these questions are helping you as much as they helped me. Okay. So these last two are a little less businessy, but they were a very key point in Shonda's book. And I think they have a ton of merit here. So number five is where can you say yes to real friendships? Are you willing to show up as you in your communities? So I'm not saying, can you say yes to friends as in you should be saying no to them. You don't actually want to hang out with them. No, 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 no. I'm talking about being real in your friendships. Having friendships in your life that are based on the reality of who you actually are, not because you're people pleasing. I know. I know. I know. So as a, for instance, um, one of the new things coming to free to paid coach is I am creating a database for a coaching exchange and referrals. You know, we've got 150 people in that program, um, and it just continues to grow and, you know, keeping track of who people are and giving them an opportunity to possibly reach out to one another for peer coaching. And this is coming up for some people. And I even just coached on it, um, that, some people won't want to put their name on this coaching exchange because, well, then people are going to see the real me and they may not like what they see. Uh, this idea that people who accept me for who I actually am, they're actually super rare. But here's the interesting thing. That's not even true. It is the other way around. People don't have to be just like you to love you. Most of my friends are incredibly different than I am, though we do have some things 
that do cross over. But I think about even my, my business bestie, we have so much in common, but, at, but we are very distinctive and very different people. So what point number five is asking of you is it, it's requiring you to say yes to real relationships to bring you, you fully realized to the relationships to let go of people who you've been saying yes to that maybe you shouldn't have, who don't love you for who you are, who do want you to be something different than how you've been showing up. There are lots of people who want me to stop cussing and to stop sharing politics. And there's definitely been rooms where I have made myself small or have not shown up as myself, but I don't do that anymore. So this is one thing I've already done and now I'm offering that it can be part of your yes plan. (laughs) What's too important to you to not show to the world? My real friends may or may not be the same, but they love me even though they know I'm going to bring that to the table. So where might you reach out? Even if it's not in business, where can you say yes to real friendship in your life with the real being you bringing your real self? What if that becomes part of your yes plan? I know, I know, right? We really don't think about how we think we are avoiding failure. This is this has to do more with probably rejection, right? Because you can fail without being rejected. But there is a lot of failure where rejection comes along from the ride, where we're literally saying, this is who I am. Love me. So are there people in your life that you might need to let go? Are there people that you want to become real friends with and you've hesitated to and you want to establish real relationships because you're not sure if they will accept you for who you are and you just can't handle the idea of being fake with yet one more person? These are some things to put on your yes plan. I know I really like this one too, even though it feels like kind of horrible and uncomfortable. (laughs) Okay, last one. Where can you say yes to love? All right, so this isn't so much about like saying yes to going on a date or like to your spouse or your partner because we're saying yes to your love. So being so honest with yourself and others about who and what you really are, what you really want because you say yes to loving you. So this might look like Um, You know, accepting help when it's offered because you don't assume you're putting people out or that you need to be the one person who does it all. You, You have said yes to loving yourself in a way where you no longer require that you be a superhuman. Saying yes to accepting compliments and not being self deprecating or rebutting compliments that come your way. Like you love yourself enough to receive love that's coming at you and say thank you and smile with appreciation. So you can see that kind of like some of the earlier ones before, number five is about like being real externally with people and like letting them love the real you. And number six is like letting you love the real you. And this honestly, like isn't this the work right here? To love yourself enough to say yes to what lights you up and to what serves you. Like really loving yourself so much that you know that you're going to have your own back. You know that no matter what happens, you love yourself enough and you are real enough with the people in your life and that they will be there to support you no matter what happens. Okay, so circling back around to that trust thing that I brought up earlier, uh, a client in in Path 100K is taking uh, this this conversation. We didn't talk so much about the yes plan, but we did talk about her creating a trust plan. Same thing, because for her, it's it's a fail plan for her because she trusts herself so little. So where hasn't she been trusting herself, and what's the yes to be had there? So that was a, that there was kind of another way of maybe asking yourself, where am I not trusting me to make decisions, to show up in my business of what I'm capable of? Because those might be opportunities to say yes as well and to add to your yes plan. 
Um, she also a super, super brilliant coach. She, w- w- we were talking about, um, part of this is our fear of feeling criticized, right? The fear of rejection, fear of pe- people being, not liking us or telling us that, you know, I, I don't like this part of you. I, I literally have people who are like, I just can't handle listening to you because you cuss. I Or I really wish you would stop talking about, you know, police brutality or whatever in your social media page. And I'm just like, okay, that's that's fine. So there's a lot of criticism coming my way. But something that I found really interesting that this client was sharing was this idea that you can't feel criticized in a regulated system. So we're talking about like your nervous system too. So don't forget the nervous system work. And I know we've had some episodes around that. Like We want to bring that along for the ride. Okay. Uh, shame only exists in a dysregulated system. When she said those words, it like literally blew my mind. <laughs> I was like, hey, what? What? Shame only exists in a dysregulated system. So make sure we're not going to dive into this. We've had these conversations before of like simple things that you can do. And I do have them. I do teach them in my programs. Simple things that you can do to like help your nervous system re-regulate itself, calm down, come back to center, bring like bring your anxiety down where there's breathing techniques, there's body, there's, you know, somatic work that we, that you can do. You, there's entire fields of study about this. My interview with Victoria last year was around this work also. So that's another great episode to listen to. So don't forget that work too, because a lot of what this is, is it's going to open you up to the possibility of rejection, the possibility of of being criticized or feeling criticized, the possibility of experiencing more shame, but you can't feel criticized in a regulated system and shame only exists in a dysregulated system. You keep that nervous system regulated as best as you can and keep practicing that alongside of this and you will get so much farther. And also, if you want one other resource of maybe like why this is, something worth doing and that's throwing the r word rejection i believe we talked about this in krista's krista st germain's interview uh, if you remember a hundred days of rejection is a really great ted talk by Zha zhang and he wrote a book called rejection proof and it's all the same thing it's all the same thing he's talking about a rejection challenge it's the same thing as a yes plan is the same thing as a trust plan it's all the same thing he said yes to being rejected every day like he famously shares about asking for a burger refill right like every single day he just asked the most outlandish things knowing that he'd most likely get rejected but sometimes he didn't get rejected so it's a very similar thing so if you want to watch a TED talk about you know and, and maybe possibly get some more ideas around around that like if, if you really want to dip your toes into the water there's so much evidence. There's so much proof out there. That the more you open yourself up, you will become so much more powerful. Shonda talked about it extensively in her book. I have experienced myself. Uh, Krista talked about it in her episode. Zha Zhang talks about it in his book and in his TED Talk. I don't mean to sound like I'm beating a, a dead horse here, but I will keep pounding this drum because it's just another way to talk about the same thing you become more sure of yourself you love yourself more you become more resilient way more confident it is the path to success and what if you make this year this year our collective year of yes i know it's mid-may but why not start now make your yes plan follow me as a close friend on instagram you want, so the way that you do that is you have to be following me on Instagram at I am Amy Latta. And then you have to, I need you to send me a direct message, a DM that you want to be added to my close friends list. I have to manually add you. You can't do it yourself. You have to be following me and then I have to add you. 
and you'll know that you're a close friend whenever you see stories that have a green ring instead of a pink ring on Instagram. And we're going to yes plan our way through the rest of this year. What do you think? Let's do this. I mean, I think I've shared this on the podcast already. And if I haven't, I'm going to definitely share this. 11 more months, I'm going to be 50 years old. This is all I'm already like, this is my path to 50. This is my year of yes. So like, come along for the ride, even though it's like mid-May to next (laughs) April-ish. What if doing a yes plan, not January to December, is one of the yes plan items? What if we did it wrong? What if we started it whenever the hell we wanted to? I also, I do want to say, also I have the reserve the right, like if I need to take this to another format, maybe a Facebook group or something, uh, just make sure you're connected with me on the close friends list in case like we move this someplace else or it becomes like a thing thing. Right now it's just going to be an, an informal thing. But I want you to join me. You win on a yes plan with me. Like connect with me on social media. Connect with me on Instagram at I am Amy Latta. Find this podcast's post and in the comments say yes to the yes plan. And I will know that you are in. We were going to do this together. And I can't wait to see what you create. It's such an honor to talk with you every single week. I can't wait to see what you create in this world. I'll talk to you next week. Coach, it's time to sign your first free client, your first paid client, your next client, and to learn how to do it consistently and having a hell of a lot of fun along the way. This is exactly what you're going to do in Free to Paid Coach. It's the only program giving you step-by-step what to do to become a paid coach and step-by-step how to handle the roller coaster emotions that come with doing what you need to do to become a paid coach. If you know you can't not do this life coaching thing, but believing that you can do it, handling rejection, and remembering how to do all of those things shuts you down, the free to paid coach community is waiting for you. Find everything that you're looking for inside. It's only $1,000, payments are available, and then you are in forever. Visit amylatta.com forward slash FTPC to join us right now. See you inside. Let's get paid, coach. Thanks so much for listening to the Confident Coaches podcast. I invite you to learn more. Come visit me at amylatta.com. And until next week, let's go do epic stuff.